Hey everyone, good evening. Now fate is, it's Thursday and it's power hour time. So I hope you guys, ladies actually, this is a topic for ladies, right? So I hope you ladies can join me tonight. I'm just going to go ahead and um, uh, log into my computer as well so that I can see myself and I can see your comments. <laughs> I can see who's here. Ladies, if you are online, come and join me and let's go. Let's have this conversation. Um, tonight's topic is leading a life of faith as a woman. As a woman. So this is uh, specifically for us ladies. But then, of course, uh, guys, gentlemen, this is also for you, right? You can apply this in your life as well. Anyways, hello, good evening. I see Jane, Sheila. Hi, good evening to you ladies um i want to see i just want to see uh see it in a bigger screen sis jovi hi good evening to you good evening i want to see um say hello if you are online so that i uh, i know who i'm talking to i we can discuss and uh ladies if you have any comment sections this is the time um, this is for us, all right? Sis Rachel, uh, Marietta, hi, good evening to you, Ines. Good evening, ladies. Thank you for joining me tonight. It's uh, eight minutes before 9 p.m. So we have eight minutes to wait for more people to join us. And again, uh, thank you for... Magandang gabi, Ines. Ang ganda, Tagalog. Magandang gabi, right? Um, we're just going to wait for more people. And again, our topic tonight is about faith right and how do we apply faith and how does faith look like for us women single uh, ladies married uh, ladies right um daughters sino pa yung nandyan? whatever role you're playing right now right how does faith look like for us sis jan hello sis Anne. good evening to you Thank you for joining me tonight. We're going to wait for a few more people. And listen, if you um, missed our Bible study, it's a recorded Bible study about Job. I have uploaded a recording of that. So go ahead and watch that. And we will continue next week for that one, for part two. Because there's two parts. I hope it's only two, not three, but two parts uh, for that conversation. So if you missed that one, it's uploaded in our Bible study. That was our last recording. Um, Ian, hi. Okay, another uh, one man, first man in the house, ladies. <laughs> Good evening to you, Ian. Thank you for eavesdropping <laughs> um, for our conversation. Watching with my lovely wife, Grace. Hello. Good evening to you. Um, and Atelaine, of course. She's Rose. Hello. Right. Yes, of course. Uh, husbands are welcome, but no comments from you, husbands, for now. I forbid you. <laughs> Just eavesdrop, listen, and and um, no commenting. Okay, Evie, hi. Sis Dali, good evening to you. Okay, Marie, hello, good evening to you. We have uh, six minutes to wait for more people. So, so yes, uh, listen. Can I ask you while we're waiting, what does fate look like to you as a woman? Or is it different? Is it different? For men and women or sis because I know as I said in the beginning whatever we're gonna talk about tonight is is applicable to to anyone right man or woman it is applicable but um, for you ladies what does fate look like for you right especially in in your life in the roles that you play in your life can you just put some comments there and, and just let me know your thoughts on this let me let me know your thoughts on our topic um and we can read that hi sis myra good evening clang good evening to you um so we have moms we have wives we have uh, daughters and sisters and and beautiful beautiful woman of now fate is online good evening sis joy joe ting hi good evening to you let's wait for more people uh we have four minutes but i'm waiting for your comments ladies Comments, comments. Um, hello, Olive. Hi, good evening to you. Or good morning. Good evening or good morning in Saudi Arabia. 
Um, so yeah, comments, ladies, let me know what what does fate look like um, to you, right? Especially as a woman, especially in your day-to-day -day role as a woman, right? What does it look like? The second man in the house, Robert, hi. <laughs> and good evening, sis Joe. And you know what, guys, again, I, I appreciate you gentlemen coming here and eavesdropping in our conversation, right? Just listen in. Um, no commenting, no questions. Um, but yeah, definitely you can learn from this. And anything that we talk about here, you can also apply in your life. So definitely everyone is welcome. Arlene, hi, good evening to you, Arlene Grace. Magandang gabi. So we have three minutes and I'm waiting for a reply. What's going on, ladies? Asa ang response nyo? Um, what does fate look like? You know what? I have... Um, this is really interesting because this is the topic, right? Lead, leading a life of fate as a woman. And really, I have chosen to speak specifically to women um, uh, for tonight. For, I would say, two reasons, right? Two main reasons. <laughs> Number one, it's because I'm going to be speaking to a group of women uh, as well tomorrow. And so I was thinking, okay, logically, okay, this is going to be my practice, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking about the same things that I will be talking about to these women tomorrow, right? However, while writing these things down and... Um, doing my my um the content for you guys for you ladies for for tonight the lord just changed <laughs> bottom line changed the, the 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 topics not necessarily the, the main topic but the details of the topic that i'm going to be talking to you ladies tonight so uh, you know uh, things happen holy spirit leads and we just have to change so i i had to change a lot of things uh this afternoon so um, bear with me, um, but yeah, that's what happened. I had some logical plans initially, but then of course the Lord um, changed my plans. So here we go. Let's let's see where where this is gonna take us. Um, uh, Cindy, hi, good evening to you. Myra says, para sa akin mas driven ang woman. Atalaga, okay, hey, hey, with 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 laugh. Okay, faith for me being. Uh, obeying God even though I can't see the results yet or do not understand okay I like that um, hi sis Jen hi sis Blinky good evening thank you sis Jen <laughs> sis Kat hi good evening so I was asking ladies uh, what does fate look like to you right as so as a woman uh, especially in in our day and age right what does it look like and, and uh, my second let me just tell you my second reason um, why again specifically for women right why this topic you know what uh, I really feel that in this season uh, what we're going through right now is very challenging right we're going through a lot of changes the world is going through a lot of changes before our eyes right and whether you are aware of it or not whether you are married you're single um, Understand that these things are going to be not only changing your life, right, but also your families, right? But not only that, the next generation after that. So I think this is also, and that's why this is a, a good conversation to be having. And us ladies, right, moms, wives, daughters, sisters, I believe we have a specific role to play. Anyway, so um, that's, uh, let me see. Aisha, good evening. Uh, good evening, and Emma, and hi, good evening to you. Um, Olive says, faith is expecting something good is going to happen regardless of any circumstance. Okay, I like that. Regardless of what's going on, right? And Evie said, hmm, must feel her intuitive po ang women. Maybe. Yes. Yeah, we use our intuition a lot more, right? And tapos yung father-daughter relationship with God po, kakaiba. Okay, I like that. Um, Klang said, as a wife, faith for me is trusting the Lord to submit to Jervi, um, her husband, Jervi's leadership, even though sometimes it's hard to do. You know what? Um, let's just say bottom line for us women, it's hard to submit, right? That's really bottom line. Um, Marie says, faith is anchored on my trust with our Lord. A woman of faith 
is equitable to a woman of trust and integrity. Wow, trust and integrity. I love that. MJ, hi, good evening to you. I hope Mela is there with you. Third man in the house. <laughs> uh, Adelaine says, faith is high expectation and hope uh, for something to happen. Um, and then faith is fully persuaded that God is true to his promises, not a liar answering on behalf of Mel Melai. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to read if you uh, um, have more comments, but let's go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you for tonight. Lord, thank you for um, our topic tonight and just zoning in to the hearts of your daughters tonight, Lord. Um, so, Lord, we just want to lift up to you our conversation tonight and bless this time together um, with us and with our um with our sisters here and of course our brothers as well who are listening just bless our moment together just bless our learning together and just lord we permit you to move in our hearts and in our minds right now we thank you lord for any change any any revelations that you are going to bring to us tonight and we just pray lord that as we receive them that we're able to um, apply them in our lives so lord we thank you uh, we just glorify you tonight, O oh Lord God. I glorify you with my words and with my thoughts tonight, Lord. And thank you. I plead the blood of Jesus over our conversation, over our homes, over all the families that are being represented here tonight, and over our, our internet connections and our devices as well. Thank you, Lord, for um, the learnings and the time together. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hello, hello again. So I see more comments. Irene said, faith is trusting God even if you don't understand parts of it and knowing that everything will be great. Everything will be fine, right? Everything will be okay. Um, AJ says, magandang gabi. AJ, hi, good evening. Um, John says, faith means in advance, believe that you have something. I like that. I like the, that phrase, right? In advance, you know, right? You know already. Um, Jovi says, or commenting, who is the mother of faith? Is, if Abraham is considered the father of faith, is it Sarah? Then? <laughs> I don't know. Who can answer that question? Um, Esther said, faith is putting my confidence on what God says. His word is true and he never fails. Okay. Good evening, sis Esther. Good evening, uh, Tita Mary. Good evening to you. Um, I, lo I love your comments, uh, ladies, and yes, I would say I agree with, with your comments and, um, and some questions. Sis Jovi, hindi ko alam yung sagot. Diyan si Sis. Now, faith is yon, not faith, okay? Let's just go ahead and get started. As I was saying, you know what, it's very interesting because I have, um, really put this topic uh, because I'm going to be uh, talking about this tomorrow to another group of, of women. Um, and I was thinking, hey, you know what, to save me some time, let me just go ahead and, and create one content, right, that I'm going to be discussing for Friday and also use that for a power hour, right? But then instead of saving me some time today, you know, while finalizing everything, the Lord just shifted just shifted and the lord just gave me a different well it's still the same it's still in the topic of faith but the lord just gave me a different um i would say perspective on this where he wanted me to uh to go for this particular night and particular conversation so anyway so here we go i i changed and um it's not as long as i wanted it to be so i don't know maybe we're gonna finish uh earlier but ladies ask questions okay let's have a conversation this is between you and you and i right the girls in the house the women in the house so let me know comments questions um and let's talk anyway so okay as i was saying the world is changing and so whether you are aware of it or not right there are changes that are happening right now um in in the world of course and in our families because we're impacted everybody is impacted and understand that these changes are not 
only going to be for us specifically personally for our family right but also for the next generations to come and i do feel that and i, I think this is the 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 biggest um oh, what the biggest twist in in the conversation in my topic tonight is because the lord and, and the lord is calling us uh, and this is the message, right? The Lord is calling us. The Lord is sending us, right? To restructure, to re reshape, to reform this change that the world is pushing, right? From the world's ways to the ways of the kingdom. From the plans of the world to the plans of the kingdom, right? And by the way, how's my audio, guys? Can, ladies, can you can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Because I don't know if I'm speaking, if I need to speak louder, but I'm just um, speaking normally right now. So let me know if, if you can't hear me uh, or if it's uh, a bit mahina, okay? So anyway, so right before our very eyes, and, and I don't know how, how you, familiar you are or how um, in tune you are with what's really going on around us, not just here in the Philippines, Right, but right before our eyes, I just want to say, um, just look at what's going on. Uh, abortion is being made acceptable, right? Being tolerated, actually being advocated, as well, right? Um, in some states in the U.S. and listen to this. And again, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Clear in mind. Okay, good, good. Uh, the kids are being raised uh, right now with no gender, with no gender. They're they're actually being called they babies so instead instead of babies right it's they bees the word they right they bees because they don't want to put any gender it, they're not going to call him he or she they would rather call them they right and these are children that are being brought up without again gender designation from birth and then these kids will decide, they will decide, right, at the age of 13 or I don't know, it depends on the state or depends on the country, what their gender would be, whether they're going to choose to be a male or a female or an LGBTQ, right? Any one of the, those things is pretty much acceptable, right? That's sad, but that is going on already. And right before our very eyes, of course, same-sex marriage, same-sex relationship, it's being celebrated, right? It's being celebrated in public. It's being celebrated in shows, in movies. We see this. And, and these are hiding behind the lie of my body, my rights thinking, right? My body, my rights. I will choose my gender. I will do abortion. I will have a same-sex marriage or relationship, my body, my rights. And that's, that's the lie behind this. And it's just interesting. And how, see, we can't even use this my body, my rights thing when it comes to um, the vaccines, right? And that's what's really interesting. Um, because the truth is, really, it's not about my body. It's not about your rights, right? It's not about the rights of women. But it's really about the world's agenda of control. And it's just sad. And, and the thing is, it's really the opposite of the kingdom because when you look at the kingdom, the kingdom is about freedom, right? The kingdom is about freedom. So, um, so that's that, right? And then right before our very eyes, you know, I see uh, horror violent movies or shows or series like, I'm going to say it again, Squid Games or I don't know, any other horror movies that are out there. They are being promoted. And you know what? See, what's sad is it's not just being promoted by the, by the world, but they're being promoted by believers, right? And it's, it's really, you know what, really? It's one thing to watch as a believer, okay? It's one thing to watch something and then you feel, afterwards you feel bad and you feel like, oh, you discern that, you know what, that wasn't good. I don't feel good about it. That, that's not right, right? I mean, that's one thing, but it's another thing to um, watch that, be excited about it, promote it, right, to the public and encourage people to watch it. That's, that's something else, you know, that's a different level of deception right there. I don't know what that is, but right before our eyes, guys, you know, we see it happening, it's there, right? And, and I think with um, uh, the lead of Netflix, 
you know, Netflix is just it's just the beginning, but I'm sure there are going to be uh, other apps and, and, and stuff that are going to coming out that will be producing their own content that, is, that are going to be similar to these things because they are being promoted, because they are getting uh, viewers, right? A lot of viewers, actually. Now, um, let me see if you have some comments. Uh, clear audio. Video po naglalag, pero I think it's on my end. Okay. Um, Joey said, leading a life of faith as a woman. I'm thinking, who is my model, woman model with a great faith like Abraham? Uh, so, Joey's thinking, sino magiging model niya? Okay. So, that that's good. That's good. You know, it's good to always look at look at it from a, that perspective, right? To relate. To just say, okay, see, see, no, who can be my model uh, with this particular um, aspect of my life, right? A anyway, uh, Joby said, gusto ko nang mag unsubscribe sa Netflix. Okay, um, I'm not saying, hey, listen, I'm not saying that you unsubscribe or not do this or not do that. Really, you know, in the kingdom, again, there's freedom. In the kingdom, we're not saying no, we're not saying, hey, it's prohibited and all that stuff, but it's always going back to, is this bringing value to my life, right? Is this bringing value to my children's? Is this bringing value to my relationships? Is this bringing value to my faith walk, right? And if your answer to that is yes, go ahead and continue doing it, right? Um, and right before our eyes, our next generation is being marginalized right they're being disempowered especially with the limitations that we have with with the lockdowns right yes we're easing off but still there are limitations and a lot of teenagers right now are going through depression they're going through um, a lot of they're not actually they're losing motivation to study and and to just kind of um, maybe I, I should I can use the word lost right like the loss of direction and because of these changes that are happening it's just um somehow they don't know right what is good for them or, or what's not good for them and what is the right direction to take and see now they're next in line for the vaccines right and it's um it's just really interesting what is the impact we need to be asking these questions this question what is the impact of this pandemic or whatever this is that's going on to not just to us but to the next generation right and i believe the answer to this question is is actually it lies on us it lies in our hands right it lies in our hands and and yes definitely us working with the lord let me just give you this so this is the um the verses that the lord had given me today uh, regarding this particular perspective that he wants me to talk about Esther 4 13 to 14 this is in NLT version again this is Esther okay NLT version it says um, this is Mordecai speaking to Esther and, and uh, 13 says Mordecai sent this reply to Esther don't think for a moment that because you are in the palace you will escape when all the Jews are killed this is talking about um, that there's bottom line there's this evil plan of killing all the Jews right and Esther is, is a Jew or it was a Jew anyway so um, again uh, Mordecai said don't think for a moment because you're in the palace that you will escape when all other when all the other Jews were killed or are killed 14 says if you keep quiet at a time like this if you keep quiet at a time like this deliverance and relief for the jews will arise from some other place but you and your relatives will die who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this and i'm sure you've heard of this phrase and it's so beautiful right for such a time as this now in the time of esther that again the threat was to the future of Jewish people right and we know that right they are being um, they are being planned to be to be all killed right now the threat in our season in our time I really believe is the next it's for the next generation right it's for our next generation ladies it's for the next generation so then therefore like Queen Esther you are a queen in the kingdom 
right? And then maybe and perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this. You were made queen for such a time as this. And I'm, I'm just going to allow that to sink in for a minute. And, and just receive that for a, mi a minute in your heart and in your mind, right? Again, I feel that as, as moms, as wives, as daughters, as sisters, right? The Lord is calling us. The Lord is sending us to restructure, to reshape, to reform Whatever this change is that, the, that the, the world is pushing, right? Whatever this change is, from the world's way to the ways of the kingdom. We have this calling and we have this assignment. And then maybe, of course, you know, and, and I'm speaking to the choir. I'm sure you've thought of this. And I was thinking of this, right? Like I was thinking, what can one person do in this situation? What can one woman do in this particular situation, right? Um, but listen, Mordecai was actually a type and shadow of Jesus. I don't know if you're aware of that. I don't know if you've studied or you've read the, the book of Esther. But Mordecai is actually, um, he, is, uh, he adopted uh, Esther, yeah, Esther is actually a younger cousin of his. Um, but if you study the, the, the story, he is a type and shadow of Jesus. And then Esther was a type and shadow of the church, right? Esther was a type and shadow of the church, of you and I, of us, right? And so from the time that Esther was brought to the palace, through this one year of preparation, uh, before going to the king, right? One year. Ladies, did you know that she had to do, it's just interesting, six months of oil treatment. Uh, myrrh was the, was the oil that was mentioned, but I'm probably, there are probably other oils, but six months of oil treatment, six months of special perfumes and ointments for an entire year, right? To prepare herself for the king. Anyway, um, to uh, her receiving favor and, and placed in a position of authority as a, as a queen, right? And to the moment when she needed to decide to stand up for what is right, she placed her dependence, she placed her trust, she placed her faith to Mordecai, right? Mordecai was actually guiding her every step of the way and it was just it's a beautiful story and because of this again one woman we're talking about one woman here queen esther she was able to change the direction and the history of the jews right he was she was able to stop the evil plan that is going to be upon the jews at that time really interesting story now again i, I have to say you were made queen for such a time as this for such a time as this you are in a position wherever you are right now right to influence the decisions of a king okay who are we talking about who, what king are we talking about here Sal? no i'm talking about someone who is in authority right i'm talking about maybe your spouse your parents um, your boss, you know, someone who is in authority in your life, right? You are in a position to influence them. You are in a position to influence not just your life, not just those people around you, but your children or the young ones that are around you, right? And the next generation. You are in a position to deflect or to change the plans of evil and bring good again to where you are right now to where you are right now starting where you are starting in your family right starting in your workplace wherever you are but see just like esther she was fully dependent on mordecai and every step of the way right you and i need to be in complete dependence right complete faith in the lord complete dependence complete faith in the lord right and that's why again i've decided you know what let's go back to our our foundation here let's go back to 
talking about faith, let's talk about this very foundation that we have here. Understanding what faith really is, right? Understanding what faith is. And that's why I ask you, what does faith look like? What does faith look like to you? Um, Brian said, surrender, surrender everything to him. Um, Jovi said, Esther had great faith. If I perish, I perish. What a strong, bold woman of faith. Right. Dibalik, whatever happens, the Lord, I am obeying. At that time, she was obeying Mordecai, who is again a type and shadow of Jesus. Right? But it's really interesting. And that should be the heart, right? Lord, whatever you say, whatever you say, uh, I'll go and I'll do. Right? Now let's talk about faith. What is faith? What is faith? And again, of course, you and I know this is not talking about faith in the world world what is it, whatever is happening out there faith in ourselves right we're not talking about that kind of faith we are talking about what faith in god yes definitely right in god but you know what when you talk about faith and you say uh, i have faith in god it's not complete right a lot of times we stop there i have faith in god pananampalataya sa panginoon right i have that Okay, pananampalataya sa Panginoon. So you believe in God and you have faith in God. But I believe that it's incomplete. Right? It's not complete. Now, let's look at what the Bible says and how God defined faith. Right? How God defined faith. And of course, this is my favorite, favorite Bible verse of all. And this is where I got the name of our community. Now faith is. Right? Hebrews 11.1 now faith is it's the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen again that's from hebrews 11 1. it's the substance when you say substance it is actually it's talking about what it means is it's the assurance it's the confidence right it's knowing that you know that you know you are fully persuaded you cannot be uh, persuade otherwise you know that you know right that is the substance that is what it means when you say that's the substance it's being fully confident fully persuaded of what of what and it says here of things hoped for of things that you are hoping for what does hope mean and i believe there was uh, olive who said about expectation of something uh, good that is going to happen in your life right that is what hope means it's expectation of things from the lord it's expectation of god's dreams manifesting in our lives it's expectation of the answers to our prayers right that's what that that is what hope uh means right it's about the good things not about the bad things right that's what hope is and, and the evidence of things. Okay, when you say evidence, it means it's a proof, right? Um, it's a proof that by which a thing is proven or tested. It's a proof of what? Of the things that are not seen, it says. Not seen. You know, I really love this because in other versions in the Bible, it says of the things that are invisible. But it means that it's not perceived by the use of our physical eyes, right? You cannot see it. But what this is saying is that your faith is a proof that the things that are in the invisible exist, right? Your faith is a proof that those things that you do not see with your physical eyes exist, right? That your world, that your reality does not only consist of the things that, that you can see, but also it consists of the things that you cannot see, right? These are the uh, things that are in the invisible. So that, what, that is what faith is. Uh, faith is believing in God, yes, but really what we're saying is to be more complete. Faith is believing it's expecting, right? It's seeing in our imagination, seeing with our mind's eye, right? It's being excited about these things. It's knowing that even though it's invisible, even though you cannot see, you cannot touch, you cannot feel, you cannot taste them, right? Yet, 
right? The answers to your prayers, the promises, the dreams that God has for you are here and now, right? They are here and now and that God had already provided, provided them to you and I that God had already provided these things to you and I. And this is what, again, why I like this, this um, Bible verse. And I like the very first word of this. It says, now, right? Now faith is. Because you know what? These are not things that you are hoping to get, that you are waiting to get, that you are waiting to have, right? What faith is saying is, it's here and it's now, right? Those things that you are hoping for, that you are expectant of, is here and they're here and now, right? So I hope you are um, understanding this. So this is a time to have a heart check, right? Check your heart. If you're not expectant, if you are not excited, if you're not encouraged, if you're not happy, right? If you're more worried, if you're more discouraged, if you're more sad about about things, right? Then maybe you are not fully persuaded. Then there's no confidence, right? Then maybe you're not fully convinced. Then maybe you don't completely believe what God has promised you, right? What he had already provided to you. Maybe, right? So it's a heart check. It's just checking your heart right now. What am I feeling? Am I worried? Am I discouraged? Or am I excited about the things that are going to be manifesting? But I know that they are here and they're here now. Right? There's a difference. Diba? Um, and I hope you see that. Anyway, guys, let me just... I forgot to turn on the power for my laptop. Let me just turn it on real quick. Hang on, hang on. Um, but comment. Give me your comment. Give me a few seconds. So what happens when we are live, right? So anyway, um, so that's a heart check for you and I, right? Are you fully persuaded? Are you fully believing, right? Do you have that confidence? And I know, I know this is very challenging, right? It's, it's good to understand. A lot of times you understand, but uh, the challenge is the application, right? Especially on a day-to-day -day basis application on your attitude on how you feel on what you say and what you think of right and and it's again it's the consistency is, is the challenging part and because we have been raised in a world and if you look around you ladies right you have been raised in a world where you are always trying to get something right at, at least in the natural you are trying to get something you need to finish uh to finish school in order to get a job right you need to work in order to get money to earn money right and sometimes you need to please someone you need to get their approval to get their attention and to get their love right and that's the world's way and, and the thing is we were brought up to witness to experience and to see it that way now, this mentality is, is like, I have to do to get something. But it's not the kingdom way, right? And it, we bring this kind of thinking to our relationship with the Lord, consciously or unconsciously, right? And, and I have to do something so that I have to do something to please the Lord so that He answers my prayer. Or I have to do something for God for Him to give me something, right? But we are not trying to get again we are not begging god to give because what because he had already given because he had already done his part right um i know you're getting this but let me see now sis esther said now yes these are not things that we are waiting to have yes what fate is it's here and now and Rose said, it's already prepared. God is waiting for us to show up and agree with him. 
I know I'm speaking to the choir, right? But you know what? Sometimes this is a good reminder. Sometimes we need to look at it and just talk about it more so that it sinks in a bit deeper, right? So that it just really comes out naturally in our conversations, in our daily things, in, in our thoughts, right? Um, it's almost Christmas, so let me just give you this example. Uh, so I'm sure you can relate to this. Christmas time, right? And let's just say your husband your 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 spouse or your parents if you are single or a close friend of yours or a close person to you right ask you i'm just going to use rose or maybe esther for example esther na lang esther esther anong gusto mong regalo for this christmas right what do you want for christmas and then of course you tell this person what you want for christmas right it's something that you are been really wanting and eyeing uh, into right uh, eyeing eyeing on for how many months and then one day this person tells you i have already purchased it right i have paid for it already it's yours it's under the christmas tree it's under the christmas tree and so how would you feel esther anong mararamdaman mo sabi sayo nandiyan na binili ko na nasa christmas tree it's under the Christmas tree. Of course, it's wrapped because it's a gift, right? So it's under the Christmas tree. What are you going to feel? How are you going to feel? You feel excited, diba? happy, and expectant. And again, excited. You want to open it. But of course, you're gonna, you are going to wait for the right timing, right? But you want to open it even though you do not know which gift out of the many gifts that is under the tree, right? You don't know which one. Kanina nasan kaya yung binigay sa akin, right? Which which gift is the gift for you, right? But you know it's there and so therefore you're excited. Knowing that it's already there, it's enough. Diba? Knowing that it's already given, that's enough. You get excited. You get like happy and you just can't wait. To open it to receive it right um <laughs> jan said eddie wow <laughs> excited to open the gift grateful super smiling face but the eye smiling yeah every part of your being is smiling diba? and jovi said depends who promised to give me the gift hey sis jovi kung si jason yan diba? jason and jason knows what you've been wanting to purchase and what you want talaga right and he purchased that for you whatever that is right so that um but see it's a different story if you don't know if the gift is there or not if the gift was purchased by the person or not it's different right it's a different feeling it's a different expectation it's a different kind of response from you if you do not know if it was given or not nandun kaya binili niya kaya i don't know right now see listen that is the same with our relationship with the lord here is the question do you really know that god had already given it to you or given those things to you or not are you fully persuaded? Are you confident 100% that it's already been given and that, that those things are here and now in your life? Right? Now, your job, ladies, again, moms, wives, uh, daughters, sister, your job is to focus on the gift under the Christmas tree. Right? Your job, when you know that it's already given to you, your job is to focus on the gift that is already there. It's reminding yourself, hey, it's here now, right? To have that positive attitude, to think, to act, and speak with confidence, right? To think, to act, and speak with gladness and excitement. I really believe that's faith right that is faith right there i you cannot convince me otherwise that you have faith but you're you're complaining and and you're um masungit, you know and you're sad or you're depressed or you're discouraged you cannot tell me that you have faith 
because then that means you cannot see if if the attitude is like that then you cannot see what god had already given you right and when you do when you can see it when you are excited when you keep your focus on that gift under the christmas tree right when you do christmas will come early christmas will come early what does that mean what does christmas coming in early mean to you i want to read this and and this is um again another bible verse that the lord gave me today isaiah 61 3 Isaiah 61 3 to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair they will be call, called oaks of righteousness a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor ladies the Lord has established all of these things in your life. What are those? Again, you are a crown of beauty. You have the oil of joy. You wear a garment of praise. And the last one, which I really love, it says, You are a display of His splendor. You are a display of His splendor. You are a demonstration of God's splendor. You are a demonstration of how a life with the Lord, a life of faith, should look like. Right? You are a, demonstra a demonstration of how a life of faith should look like. Right? And when you completely believe this, when you completely understand this, and when you completely have this manifest in your life, right, with the way you deal with things, with the way you speak, with the way you think, with the way you deal with people, with the way you make decisions, now you are able to influence the decision of a king, right? Whether that's your spouse, your parents, the people around you, your boss, right? The people that are um, above you. You're able to influence them, right? You are able to influence your children. You're able to influence the world around you. A lot of times, ladies, I, th there's, the issue is there, right? A lot of times we feel that we don't have a voice. A lot of times we feel that, okay, my child is, is in rebellion, my child is not obedient. My child is not following my direction, my instruction, right? But see, the thing is, a lot of times it's because you have no influence. But it doesn't mean that you don't have that because what we have, what we have established, God, the Lord had already given that to you, right? However, however, I really believe that knowing these things, that you are what? A crown of beauty, that you have the oil of joy, that you wear a garment of praise, that you are what? A display of His splendor. When this is manifesting in your life, I really believe everybody around you, you can influence, right? When you speak, they will listen. When you speak, they will consider. Your kids, when you speak, they will obey, right? I want to see what your comments are. Uh, question on here. Um, I don't know if, if you're seeing this, but it's more on when you look at faith. And I, I know there are so many ways you can actually talk about faith and talk about application of faith and talk about like how do you see your faith, right? But then um, this is the perspective that I really want to zone into and I really want to highlight to you and I, ladies. It's how are you responding um, to people, to things, to situations around you? Are you responding with the thought in mind that, hey, I am a demonstration of God's splendor. I am a demonstration of, of um, how a life of faith should look like. That I carry a jar of oil, a jar of oil of joy, right? I I wear the garment of praise, and that people see that in your life. See, that's the challenge, challenging part right there. That people see that in your life, but when they do, and if they do, 
then um, you will see that influence around you. You will have that influence around you, right? I hope you are seeing this. It's not necessarily um, uh, specific things that you do. Yes, it is. However, it's, it's really how you speak, how you respond, how you talk to people. What, what, what is your countenance? right when they see you when you come into the door when you come into the room when you stay in this house like what is your countenance right what what is anong reaction sa mukha mo <laughs> bottom line that's what it is right what does your children see when they see your face what does your spouse see when he looks at your your face what does your parent what do your parents see when they look at your face when they talk to you what do they feel right what is the tonality when you speak? These things are, you know, sometimes we're not paying attention to these things, ladies, but I really believe that that is the message for us right now, right? And, and depending on how you respond, depending on how you speak to them, that faith or fear, right, is going to come out. And it's just going to influence the things around you and the people around you and the results that you get, right? And it's either going to, you're either going to change things for the better or just go in line with what the world is pushing. It's really up to you and I, right? And I really believe that, kaya nga sinabi, um, for, for women, for the moms, right? Sa mga nanay, sa mga moms and mothers, ilaw sila ng tahanan, right? Ilaw ng tahanan. Or, um, in, in English naman, uh, in other words, in other terms, they say that you carry the thermostat of the house, right? Depending on how you feel, depending on, all your, depending on your mood, you actually take the entire family, the entire household with that kind of mood, right? With that kind of response, with that kind of, of, of heart, of, of um, direction, right? So, so again, it's, it's crucial to just be mindful of what am I spreading here? What am I giving out here, right? And it's going to be very difficult if that's just coming from you and you alone. If you're not coming from, if you're not taking it from the Lord, right? If you are very patient, but it's only on your own effort. If you're being very gentle and kind, but it's only on your own effort, that's going to be very difficult. Sooner or later, maubus yan, right? Sooner or later, it's, it's going to run out. Because why? Because you're not getting it from the main source, from the Lord. But when you are from from God and you are connected and you are like knowing that you know what Lord you have given this to me I'm not looking for security I'm not looking for love I'm not looking for anything else from people around me because you have given this to me right because you are my source and then so therefore you can continue giving up you can continue caring you can continue nurturing because you are filled right so it's just knowing that again the foundation is knowing what god had already given you right and just understanding that and, and having that revelation in your heart um <clears throat> comment that kind of faith cannot be manufactured it takes real intimacy with god to have that kind of faith that kind of faith um but definitely you cannot manufacture yes i agree it takes full intimacy it takes some yeah, that confidence, right? That it, it shows in your attitude and the way you talk. Yes, actually, maybe you can fake it temporarily, right? For a, a, a limited period of time, yes, but not, not for a long term. Mauubos, as I said, you know, sooner or later, you're going to run out. Sooner or later, you're going to run out of smile. You're going to run out of patience. You're going to run out of, of that excitement, whatever that thing is. If it's not coming from the Lord, if you don't have this established in your heart and in your mind, right? Um, I'm, you know what, ladies, I'm done. That, that really is, that is the message here, right here. 
you know, sometimes we want to look at faith and we want to go dig deeper and deeper and deeper. But the thing is, I believe this is a deeper one. It's really just looking at how am I responding to my children when they approach me with something that's uh, not good, right? How am I responding to my spouse when um, he uh, approaches me for, with something that's not good again, I'm not happy with, right? How am I responding with, uh, uh, to my parents, to my sisters, to my sibling, right? How are you responding? Are you demonstrating God's splendor in your life? Are you demonstrating God's splendor? And the thing is, again, the way to do that is focusing your eyes on what? On that gift under the Christmas tree, right? That gift under the Christmas tree. Anyways, um, I don't see any question, ladies. I'm just going to go back. Uh, yeah, I don't see any question. But the book of, of Esther is really, is really good. So I want to encourage you to uh, read that as well. But I, I believe that it's very timely to, to what is going on around us right now. Um, and, and yeah, so I hope you got the message. I hope you received it. You don't have any more questions. I am ready to pray. <laughs> I'm just waiting for any any other comments, but if you don't, I'm just gonna go ahead and pray and just pray this um, this Isaiah 61 three for for you and for us, you know, for all of us ladies here tonight. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for tonight, and we thank you for all the ladies here tonight, for all the ladies that are listening here. And also the gentlemen, right? And also for the ones who are going to be listening to this recording. Lord, I just lift up every heart, every heart, every mind, every soul that is, that is here tonight. Um, and I speak Isaiah 61, 3 to each one of us tonight. And it says to bestow on them, to bestow on us, right? A crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair, that we are called the oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. And Lord, this is who we are. And I just speak that to each woman here tonight and for those who are going to be listening to this. I just speak that to each one of us, O Lord God, that Lord, we will understand what this means. That on a daily basis, God, Holy Spirit, that you will remind us of this. That we are to show everyone around us that our life is a life, it's, it's a life of faith. It's a life of splendor that you want to display to the world. And so, Lord, I just pray that, that you will remind us of these things, that you will empower us as well, Lord God, that you will give us that empowerment, that strength, that excitement in our hearts, that, that happiness and gladness in our hearts to just be that, to just respond that way to every situation and to anyone around us. So I just pray that for us tonight, oh Lord, that this faith that you're talking about in your word will be fully established, will be fully um, enforced in our lives, oh Lord God, right now, in our minds, in our hearts, in our bodies, in every aspect of our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you, Lord, for um the revelation and the learning holy spirit thank you lord for what you have given us tonight and we pray um, that we will be able to just establish this every moment of of our day-to-day -day situations we pray this lord god and we thank you and we love you jesus in your name we pray amen and amen um ladies i thank you for joining me tonight and i will see you next week for the continuation of job goodbye for now